Crafty Gemini, and this video is video number three in my Westchester Dolman Top video so long, where I'm going to be talking to you all about fabrics that I suggest, recommend, tips and tricks and things so you can have a better idea of what fabrics will work and won't work when you tackle this project. So we are going to start talking about fabric and what fabrics you should be choosing and pre-washing, of course, whenever you make garments, you want to make sure to wash and dry the fabric the same way that you plan to wash the finished garment. So if you're like me and you throw everything in the washing machine and dryer, go ahead and do that to prep your fabrics, of course, making sure that it is machine washable and dryable. So keep that in mind. But what we're wanting to do is to take out any of the shrinkage before we cut out our pattern pieces. Okay, so that's step number one. Now when it comes to choosing your fabrics, I'm going to be talking to you more about what my suggestions are as far as the amount of stretch that you should be looking for in a fabric that will kind of set you up a little bit better for more successful results on your first Westchester Dolman top, okay? You can't really just grab any old stretch knit and think that it's gonna work. And we're gonna talk about that in this video because I find that this part is probably gonna be the trickiest, most confusing, and the part that beginners really get overwhelmed by. And it's because you need to have more experience. Understanding how different textiles work with a specific pattern design, silhouette, and shape, really just, there's no real shortcut way into it. You have to know and understand and have worked with different fabrics and different patterns. It really is a lot of trial and error. So here I'm wearing a Westchester Dolman top that I made out of a polyester spandex. It's kind of um, like an ITY knit, an interlock twist yarn knit and you will see these everywhere they have really nice bright colors they come in amazing prints and they have a little bit more body to them so they're not quite as drapey as some other poly spandex blends that you can find out there and this fabric is not my favorite and in the video i'm going to tell you why it still looks okay it works fine but if you notice here i get these kind of let me see if i can turn to the side and you, you see it a little bit more it's like these radiating lines that come out from the neckband and I don't like the way that it looks. <laughs> now, I cut it out in the exact same size that I've cut out all the other tops that I've done. So that tells me it's not the pattern. It's not a specific adjustment I had to make. It really is the fabric in this case. And so this is, I wanted to show this to y'all so you can see kind of an example of where if you choose the wrong fabric, you might still not end up with a result that you really like. And so I'm trying to make sure that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now, because this pattern is a dolman top, meaning that the, the dolman sleeve is built into the front bodice, you're always going to have some extra fabric here. It's not like a huge bat wing, but you are going to have some fabric because there is no seam there. But what I don't like is like these lines that come out from the neckband area here. Now, if I were have tr would have tried this pattern out for the first time with this fabric, I would have thought to myself, well, maybe I need to make, you know, a hollow chest adjustment or like a gaping neck, but it's not really there. It really is that the fabric has a little too much body for what it needs to drape over in this area of my body is what it looks like to me. Plus I did a line of top stitching right here and I feel like the top stitching is almost like holding the fabric and so it's not letting it drape correctly. So there's so many different little factors that come into play when you're trying your hand at sewing clothes that again, a lot of trial and error, a lot of frustration if you really don't have a good foundation of what to start with and it just, you gotta spend the time with it. So hopefully in this video, you'll leave with a little bit more knowledge and information so you know what fabrics, what type of fabrics you should be looking for to try your hand at the Westchester Dolman top. So again, it still works. It's an okay shirt. I'm not a huge fan of this. So I know that this kind of poly spandex IT wine it, but it's really stretchy. And so if based on the stretch content alone, I would have said, oh, this will work perfectly. But the weight of the fabric, it just has a little bit more body and it does not drape the way that I want it to, or like any of the other tops do really. So again, you're just gonna have to play around with it. So let's jump right into the video where I'm gonna give you some tips, tricks, and some stretching uh, exercises so that you can figure out how much stretch the fabric that, say you see a fabric that you like, I will show you what you need to do to test that fabric and see if it has the minimum amount of stretch that I recommend for this pattern, especially for beginners. Now when it comes to choosing fabric for the Westchester Dolman top, the pattern was designed for a minimum of 40% stretch, but I'm going to suggest to beginners to start off with fabric that has at least 50% stretch. That way you know that it will be good to go for sure. Now one of my favorite fabrics to make this project up in is double brushed poly. 
and that is a brushed polyester fabric that's super soft feeling on the exterior, which is where the color of the print is, and then also on the back. It feels super smooth on both sides, and it's a 95% polyester, 5% spandex blend. Some of them are a little different, maybe 96.4, but they're pretty close in that range. Now, the reason I like this fabric is because it's super lightweight, it's foolproof to use for this pattern, and it also comes in a gazillion different colors and fun, fun prints to use. So what I want you to do when you're trying out and figuring out what fabric you're gonna use to make this top, you need to determine if it has at least 50% stretch. And we're gonna say in both directions, meaning vertically and then also horizontally, so across both grain lines. So let's have a look and see. In one direction, and this is how I want you to test to see if it has that amount of stretch. I want you to pinch the fabric, and don't do this on the edge, like some people will measure right here on the edge. It'll tend to splay out a little bit more because it is on the edge. So instead, lay it out and come in a couple inches. So I'm gonna pinch with my hands and leave a distance of fabric here of about four inches. So I'm pinching here where the one is and here where the four is, okay? Now this four inch chunk that I have in between my fingertips right here needs to stretch at least to the six inch mark and that will tell me it has 50% stretch. So before I do this, how does that work? Well, if four inches is what I'm starting off with, this is 100% of the fabric that I'm about to test. 50% of this chunk is half of it, right? Half of four inches is two inches. So for 50% stretch, it needs to stretch an additional two inches beyond the full me measurement. So hopefully that makes sense. So I have four inches, and if I can stretch four inches, two more inches, which is half of what I have here, that tells me that it has 50% stretch. So let's see, I have it here and here. I'm not gonna move my fingers from the, the measurement part so I can make sure that I'm still correct. I'm gonna move this right hand over and pull. And you see, it takes me even further if I really wanna stretch it. So because I've passed the six now with my fingers, I know that this direction has at least the 50% stretch that I need. Now let's try it in the other dimension. And so for that, now we went this way, now we're gonna test the stretch this way. So grab it here, just one layer of the fabric, fold it up, and turn it so you can do the same thing. And something tells me that this is gonna have a lot more stretch because I'm grabbing it now on the crosswise grain, which is usually where you get the most amount of stretch. So again, I'm putting it here at zero and pinch here at four. And try to lay it flat, don't stretch it to get it to the four. You want where the fabric is lying flat, here and here, and then once you're there, stretch. And you can see this has over 100% stretch, right? Because 100% would be four inches being stretched the same four inches more, so from four to eight. That would be 100% stretch, and you can see that in this direction, I get a ton more stretch. So that tells me that this fabric will be perfect to use to make the Westchester Dolman top. Now let's try the same little stretch thing with a different fabric. Here I have the selvage edge of my fabric, and on stretch knits and all other fabrics, the selvage, if it's running here, perpendicular to the selvage is going to be the crosswise grain, which is going to be the degree of greatest stretch. Parallel to the selvage edge is the lengthwise grain, so typically you'll have less stretch in this direction. So let's have a look and test it in both directions, right? We said that the standard we're looking for is 50% stretch in both directions. So I'm not gonna start measuring on the edge, I'm gonna come in a couple inches, move this fabric over, and I'm going to place it here flat without stretching it first and grab my four inches. And I'm just putting this ruler on this white background so you can see hopefully the measurement's a little bit easier. Okay, so zero and then I'm pinching it at four. So again, for 50% stretch, we needed to stretch at least to the six inch mark. So I'll hold here, I'll hold here, and I'm gonna pull. And it gets me just there. So in this direction, that's, that will work, okay? So if I'm testing out this fabric and the degree of greatest stretch reaches that minimum of 50, I already know that in the other direction it's gonna stretch less, so I'm probably not gonna hit the 50% stretch, but let's try it. So selvage going this way, now we're gonna turn it so the selvage is going this way, and we'll test it now along the lengthwise grain. So again, come in a couple inches from the edge, I fold it back on itself so I have something good to grab onto, place it flat, zero and four, and now we stretch. 
and I'm barely making it, like I am really pulling to get it to the sixth. So this fabric has just about 50% stretch in both directions. What that tells me is what? The fabric will work for the dolman top, you may want to size up, okay? But if you don't size up and it fits fine, it's probably gonna be nice and fitted. So if that's the look that you're going for, feel free to have at it. All right, let's grab another one. This also is a stretch knit, but this is a double knit. It's more along the lines of kind of like a lightweight ponte knit. So it's a lightweight double knit, which would still work. You can make this top in a variety of different stretch knit fabrics, but you want to look for something that has that minimum amount of stretch. All right, so let's see. I just have a scrap piece here, so I can't really see where the selvage is, so we just test it. I'm gonna grab here, a little bit away from an edge, zero and four, and then pull to get to six. So in this direction, great, I have at least a 50% stretch that I need, great. Now let's turn it the other way. So this way, I have zero and I have four. I'm gonna grab right there and I'm gonna pull. And I'm pulling. And this does not even have 25% stretch because you can see I can barely make it over to the five inch mark from there. So will this fabric be suitable for this project? Maybe, right? But if you're starting off and making it for the first time, that's what my starting guideline is. I'm telling you find something that has 50% stretch in both directions. That does not mean that the fabric cannot be made from other fabrics that don't meet that requirement. That's just saying you need to have a little bit more experience and experiment a little bit more to make sure that it will work for what you want. For a beginner, I don't want you to do that. I want you to have successful results from the first try at making your Westchester Dolman top. All right, so similar to the fabric that we just tested, remember that met the minimum 50% stretch in both directions, I made a sample top up in that fabric and it works fine. I didn't cut the smaller size because it didn't have that much stretch, so instead I cut out the extra large which is more true to my measurement size so that I know that the top would fit. Remember, the reason that we're gonna cut it out or that I cut out the uh, large size is because I'm gonna use the double brush polyester fabric which is this stuff that had way, way more stretch than the minimum 50%. So remember, it's always about striking that balance between the size that you're cutting out, your body measurements, and then the fabric that you're using, especially when it comes to stretch knits. The amount of stretch will affect the way the pattern fits you and what size you should be cutting out. So again, if you're cutting out the size closest to your body measurements, uh, based on the minimum 50% minimum stretch on the fabric, don't size down, okay? It's gonna be semi-fitted based on those measurements. So go with the truest size to your body measurements, okay? So that's with that. This sample here I made with the double brushed polyester fabric, okay? So this one I did size down and made a large and it worked out great. Now those of you out there thinking, well, I like this pattern, I may give it a try, but you might be thinking that you need a serger or that you need a cover stitch machine. Well, I like to teach people how to make clothes using just a sewing machine. And so you can see that that's what I've done here. It's hemmed with a narrow zigzag stitch, still maintains its stretch, stitches don't pop. And then even in the neckband here, I use a slight zigzag stitch to top stitch the seam allowance down. And it looks nice, okay? but it does take practice and it takes you stitching consistent seam allowances and knowing exactly where it's gonna fall from the front so that you make sure that you catch the seam allowance in the underside of the neckband. And because you all know that I'm all about the education, I left a little piece here that was off so I can show you. If you have the experience, I mean, and you'll look at this and think, wow, what a nicely finished neckband, but don't think that that will come to you in your first try. You may end up with a chunk like this, or maybe the whole neckband will be like this where this was not completely flat down, so the top stitching on this side didn't catch the seam allowance. Is it the end of the world? No. Can you still wear it? Absolutely. One of the good things is that this fabric, most stretch knits, will not unravel on you. So does it matter that that looks like that? Not really. You'll wear it, it's not that big of a piece, and nobody will be able to tell from the outside that that little piece didn't get caught from the top stitching on the front. But the rest of the neckband, you can see, I did a pretty nice job making sure to catch it close to that lower edge and you get a nice finished neckband on your t-shirt, okay? Here's another one that I did using a Liverpool fabric, which is a stretch knit. It's definitely heavier than the double brush poly. 
It has a little more weight to it. And this one, again, I did it on the machine, only on a regular sewing machine, and I didn't top stitch the seam allowance down. So if you do not want any stitching to show from the outside here, you can also leave it like that. Just give it a nice press, and when you wash it, press it nicely so that the seam allowance folds under inside and you don't have it coming up. Even if it is lifted up, you'll see that it's not necessarily gonna show here. You can just fix it as you're wearing it and get it to lie nice and flat against your skin. So that also is another option. Now let's talk about the Liverpool. Since I did the stretch test with the other fabrics that I just showed you, Liverpool is more like a double knit for me. It's like a little bit heavier. It's polyester and spandex. And now let's test the fabric on here so you can see that it is different from what I just told you. But I'll tell you why. This fabric, okay, side to side across the body will be the degree of greatest stretch. So let's come in a little off the hem edge here, and I'm gonna grab four inches here, lay it flat so I don't stretch it yet, and here. So if I'm going with the 50% minimum, I need to stretch this to the six inch mark. So let's try it and see what we get. Perfect, I get a little bit over the six inch, so I know in that direction, the degree of greatest stretch, I have at least the 50% that I told y'all to get. Now let's test it in the other way, lengthwise, which is gonna run vertically along your body when you're wearing it. Here's zero, here's four. Now you see when I pull, it barely gets me to the, to the five. So that tells me that this fabric has 25% stretch along the vertical grain line. But you'll see that I still made the top. Just because you don't meet the 50% minimum stretch in both directions doesn't mean that it won't fit you. It just means that you need to know what size to cut to make sure that it fits you. Now this one fits me nice and snug. So it's very, I would say not fitted fitted, but a little bit more fitted than a semi fitted. But because I still get the same, the minimum amount of stretch around my body where I need the degree of greatest stretch to be, it fits around all the chunkier places that it needs to. And the part that is less than the 50% that I told you to get, it runs vertically, which is fine. As long as I know what size to cut so that it gets around my curvier parts, then I can go with a little bit less stretch along the vertical grain line because that just means the top is not gonna fit super long. So instead, to make up for it, you can just cut the pattern a little bit longer. But know that I did design this pattern to already be a longer length of a top because I don't like shirts that fit super low. I like them like super short on your waistline or that show the tops of the pockets of your jeans. That's not how I like to wear my tops. So I designed this shirt to finish longer at the hem, all right? Here's another option. This one too was, all, was only made on a domestic sewing machine. You can see the hem here has good stretch to it. There are no surged edges. I simply top stitch this, but I will share that little tip with you later on on what to use here to keep the same stretch and just do a simple hem at the bottom of your Westchester Dolman top. So again, just a quick recap. If you want to end up with a top that's nice and stretchy and is a little bit more loose, go with a fabric that has a lot more than 50% stretch in both directions, like the double brush poly that I talked about, like the sample that I showed you here. If you want to make the top because you're just in love with a different kind of print and it doesn't quite have that much stretch like these two, this jersey knit and this Liverpool fabric, then you're gonna wanna choose your size closest to your measurements, all right? You're not gonna wanna size down because then you might not have enough stretch in there to get it around you. So instead, go with the size, uh, or cut out the size, I should say, that fits most closely to your body measurements because it is semi-fitted. There is some added ease in there and we do want the stretch to work for us also, all right? Now here we have another sample that I made and this is out of a slightly different fabric. It's a polyester spandex fabric and it's about 95% polyester, 5% spandex. So this top was made, same pattern. You can see what I did because the, the neck band and the sleeve bands are separate pieces that are cut. You can also play around uh, with the different fabrics and colors that you use so you can get this kind of a look instead of keeping the, the neck band the same fabric as well as the sleeve band. So that's another fun kind of play around option so you end up with some different looking tops. But this is not my favorite fabric to use. And the reason for that is I think the neckline, because it comes out a little bit more versus being a narrower one, it kind of scoops out like this. There's something about having the sleeve built into it here that creates these kinds of lines. Okay. 
And that's going to be really based on the type of fabric. And I think also the combination of the top stitching that's done here. If you use a really small stitch, whether it's on a domestic sewing machine or on your cover stitch machine, the smaller the stitch, the tighter it is. So it's kind of like not letting the fabric breathe and drape over your bust and your shoulders. So you, when you're wearing it, you tend to get these lines that radiate out from the neckband. When you're making garments, a lot of this is trial and error as well as built up years of experience. You have to pick the right fabric that worked for that pattern, okay? As well as you can see here, the different type of stitching. So even though I've made this top in other polyester spandex blends, I don't get these radiating tops even though I've done the top stitching. So it has to do with the weight of the fabric, the way that it drapes, and then how small your top stitching here. Keep the stitch or the or the the top stitch here. I like to keep them longer or wider. For example, on this one, which is a different kind of polyester knit, the double brushed, I did a narrow zigzag stitch for the top stitching. It's a little bit more open, not quite as dense, and you don't get those radiating lines also because this fabric is a little bit more lightweight than this one, so it drapes a little bit easier as well. So again, just because you try this pattern maybe in one fabric and you see that it doesn't work, I suggest that maybe you try the fabrics that I'm suggesting for you to try so you can see the difference and then you can adjust accordingly. And I know that that can be overwhelming because there's so many different factors that come into play with every single project that you try. The pattern, how it was drafted, the fabric you choose, the level of sewing skill that you have. So my recommendation to you again is get a fabric that has at least that 50% stretch going in both directions, okay? And something that is lightweight. You can make this top out of a sweater knit for the winter time or for the fall, but again, start off with something a little bit simpler, something that's more readily available, like the double brush fabric. We actually have it in our shop right now in a bunch of different fun prints and colors that you can check out, solids as well. So try it out in this fabric first. It's the one that I tend to get the best results with and I think any beginner can do it. And it's also on top of that, a super soft fabric to use, to work with, and to wear. Now here's something else to keep in mind when you're choosing your fabrics and getting ready to make this. The neckband here, and I made this one as a sample to show you that just because the fabric that you've chosen works for the body of the top does not necessarily mean that you want to use it at the neckband. All right, so I'm going to show you me wearing this top and what happens to the neckband. And if you recall, this fabric did not have that much stretch, okay? It had about 50% in both directions, all right? The neckband, I always, always prefer to have something that has a good amount of spandex in it. So just because the top will work for the body of it, the neckband is a little bit different. You don't want it to splay out like this. You want it to cinch in the neckline so it lies flat against your chest. And so that's going to require a slightly different fabric with a little bit more stretch. The reason that we need a little bit more stretch in the neckband is because we need to pull and stretch the neckband as we're stitching it on. Once you're done attaching it from pulling and stretching as you go, when you let it go, it cinches in versus splaying out like this. And you can, I think you could probably see that even without it being on me, that the neckband is going to stand up some because it does have some stretch, but it's not what I'm looking for. So keep that in mind so that you know, even if you buy a fabric that has this kind of stretch here for the neckband and the sleeve bands, I would also say, you'll need something a little bit different if you want it to really have that bounce back that grabs. This is gonna fit a little bit more loosely. Okay, you can see I had to stretch it really good to get it in there, but it's not, it doesn't bounce back. Okay, so there's not a lot of spandex to cinch it in around my arm if I want a more fitted look at the sleeves. So keep that in mind, that's what you'll see that I did here with these guys. When you see a different color neckband and a different sleeve band, you can see this bounces back. It has really good stretch because it's 95 poly and five of the spandex. 5% spandex is gonna give you really good. And I would say not to try a neckband with anything less than 5% spandex. So I used the double brush poly in black here for the neckband and for the sleeve. And then I also, even though this is a Liverpool fabric that I use for the body of it, I still went ahead and used the double brush poly at the neckband and at the sleeves. So you can combine the different fabrics. So remember, this one didn't have much vertical stretch. It had the minimum 50% stretch to go across the degree of greatest stretch around the body. But I needed more than that amount of stretch for the neckband and here. So I used the solid black.
So that's something else that you need to keep in mind. So it's not just one fabric through and through. It can be if it's a double brushed poly or a fabric that already has the 95% uh, or excuse me, the 5% spandex minimum. So on this one, we used one fabric for the body and the sleeves. This fabric has 5% spandex, so I know it will work also for the, net, for the uh, sleeve band. And then I used a solid here. I could have easily used this same fabric to create the neck band because again, it's the same fabric and has at least 5% there. But instead, you know, I'm a little bit funky, so I wanted to go with that solid coral, which again is a double brush polyester fabric for that point there. So there's a lot of mixing and matching. And remember, this is gonna take time, trial and error, experience, but I'm trying to show you as much as I can up front to get you to have some successful results with your first one. And that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about stretch knit fabrics and how to calculate the amount of stretch along the different grain lines in your fabric. So if you don't yet have your fabric already for the Westchester Dolman, hopefully now you're equipped with the information that you need to choose the right fabric to get some great results on your first try. Now, if you enjoyed this video tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up below, share it with your friends, and when you click my subscribe button, if you like what you see, make sure that you also enable the little bell icon that you'll see nearby. If you click on that, then you will get email notifications every time I upload a brand new video. That way you won't miss out on any of them. Now, if you're following along in the Westchester Dolman Top Sew Along, go ahead and leave me a comment below and let me know what fabric you are gonna be using for your first try at the Westchester Dolman Top. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.